It's Confident Computing number 831. How to remove pups and other unexpected things from your computer. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here with this week's video summary of the emailed Ask Leo newsletter, Confident Computing. If you're not subscribed, be sure and head out to newsletter.askleo.com to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button down below to subscribe to this video channel for all of the tips, tricks, answers that I produce almost every day. And of course, if you've got a question, askleo.com slash ask is the place to start. This week's featured article is in fact all about Pups, no, not the canine kind, potentially unwanted programs, but there's rarely anything potentially about it. Almost always these are programs that get installed as a side effect of installing something else, and they're typically not something we asked for and not something we want. How to remove pups and other unexpected things from your computer goes into the details of the steps I recommend to get rid of them. Also this week, what can I disable in Task Manager's startup list? While the location has changed over the years, it used to be MS Config, the question remains the same. There are so many things that start automatically when you log into Windows. What can you turn off? The answer, of course, is it depends, but I'll give you some guidelines on exactly what to look for and what to consider when you're deciding what to turn off. Yes, your security software might slow down your computer. It's one of those unfortunate side effects, but some security software has such a dramatic impact on your system that it can actually slow it down. The problem, of course, is that there are no consistencies. It can vary from machine to machine and software package to software package. There are some things to try. There are some things to, I'll say, schedule. And I'll just remind you that this is, in fact, one of the reasons my recommendation remains Windows Security, formerly known as Windows Defender. In my experience, it is one of the packages that impacts people the least. Could OneDrive get hacked? Well, yeah, but it's not something you want to worry about. There are other, more important things, more practical things that actually put your security at greater risk than services like OneDrive themselves getting hacked. Could OneDrive get hacked? What you really need to worry about goes into those things in more detail. Now, this week, we've changed the lineup of how we release YouTube videos so they'll be in sync with the articles that I've just discussed. This week on the TEH podcast, Kay's back as a guest or former host or something. We end up talking about what Apple released last week, of course. And of course, we talk about Amazon Day. Amazon Prime Day, actually, and how it's about so many more retailers than just Amazon. Gary recommends a book. Kay recommends a book, and I recommend a YouTube channel destroying things. That's all in this week's TEH podcast number 114, Apple Surprises, Prime Days, Batteries, and Crushing Things for Fun. As always, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, have fun, wear a mask, and I will see you here again next week. Thanks again for watching. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is AskLeo.com.